If you's a Christian, you can roll with me. Come roll with me. Predestined eternity. Eternity. Born again, baptized. We ride with Christ, we ride If you's a Christian, you can roll with me Come roll with me Predestined eternity Eternity. Born again, baptized Baptized, we ride With Christ, we ride with Christ be right. It's on the Lord, I focus in those times I'm feeling hopeless. I'm giving all the praise to the Father who wrote this. I quote this, living at times can be ferocious. But that's when the power of God is at its most when the spiritual battles for your soul. So why you coasting? My eyes on my pride, staying humble with no boasting. Prepare ye the way of the Lord with one notion, affects and devotion. For Jesus is risen from his grave, rolled away the stone, making a way. For the lost to be saved, I never knew how enslaved it can be To the streets till Jesus rescued me In those times when it was dark and I can barely see Blindness can be, but then the Savior seeing my needs Giving grace, giving mercy daily, raising the seed To those who believe, the rapture's coming, don't be deceived Stay intrigued, not naive, no disbelief If you's a Christian, you can roll with me Come roll with me Christ, we ride, for Christ we ride, if you's a Christian you can roll with me, come roll with me, predestined eternity, eternity, born again, baptized, baptized we ride, with Christ we ride, for Christ we ride, I know the time will come, I get to meet ya, but how can I greet ya if my praise didn't reach ya? We all have all in short, I'm just the highest of your creatures. I'm in the game, seeking Christ, not sitting in the bleachers. I beat ya in the church to live in your way. I'm making praise to the Father, melodic to phrase. I'm raising his name, taking aim just to proclaim. Cause I became the remain, cause I'm your vessel for your game. For you overcame and made a way. Let's go take the lead in where you go. I wanna stay. And Father, I pray, plus I say, another day, I'm thanking you for, Lord, cause I'm looking to wars, my life to be restored, for we got a reward, recorded, it's been stored, to heaven I'm aboard, shield of faith when I'm under attack, I give it to you, Lord, I'm not looking back. If you's a Christian, you can roll with me, come roll with me, predestined eternity. We ride, for Christ we ride If you's a Christian you can roll with me Come roll with me Predestined eternity Eternity. Born again, baptized Baptized we ride With Christ we ride get introduced to that then you just I know you just didn't pop up one day and say, no, no. I'm going to get me some math. What this what job was so remember? this job was so physically demanding. Um I work twelve hour days. I'm eighteen. Mm -hmm. Um I work four days a week, twelve hour days, you know, mm -hmm. and I was getting paid good pretty good money at that mm -hmm. age. So, you know, I had opened up a savings account and I would be at work at lunch and I'd be I'd just be a, I wouldn't even eat lunch. I'd be mm -hmm. matter of fact I can remember going home, me and my uncle riding home, and he'll get the shower first, and I'd be in my room, 
and I'd, I'd probably be snacking, waiting for him to get out of the shower. And I literally would wake up with the same boots on, same clothes on, and dog my, tired. And my aunt will wake me up. She's like, she's like, Neil, get up. You gotta, we gotta. You're gonna be late. You gotta go to work. And I was like, and I would literally think that it was the same day, but it was the next morning. And I would just go to work, and I'd mm -hmm. be at work. Real, real, real tired, you know. I was, but were you using like I wasn't uh, using alcohol or anything? No, or I, was, I was smoking marijuana. Okay. Yeah, I was smoking marijuana, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I can remember going to work and just being tired, and I just remember at this guy, uh, he was like, "Hey, man, you, you need a little something here, oh, come." And man. that's where it was, man. I mean, him I went to the bathroom, started See? started using that work. And he, 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 he put the line out for you? Put yeah, he, he threw it out there and I took it. You know, he, you didn't pay for it? No. Nah, nah, not at all. No. And then that's something how it starts. You always, yeah. it's always free. Yeah, it was exactly how it went down. Like, he was like, here, man, give me a pipe. And I went mm -hmm. out there and I smoked in the bathroom. And then, you know. So did you choke up of it? Did, how did you? No, I was a better, I felt good. Man, it was no, like, no adverse. Uh, nah, I welcomed it. I was like. I felt, I felt, it just changed me immediately. I just was like, okay, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Boom, immediately, and I, and I was just zooming, but. Zooming? I was zooming. I was go, I was going. <laughs> you know? Like, it, it'd be break time, and I would just want to continue to work, you know? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, my work performance started deteriorating. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I started, like, because I was a sandblast. I worked in the, in the paint department, mm -hmm. and. You know, you just have to like sandblast a little bit of the rust, and I was like, I was damaging the metal. Mm. That's how. That's how. That's how loaded I was. Like I was like, I was costing that company more money because right. of the damage I was doing to the, to something that was gonna just get you know grinded, sanded out. Mm -hmm. You know, they, it was like a, a assembly line. You know, they put things on the factory hood, and it was like real dangerous work. You know, mm -hmm. and it, a lot of accidents were starting to happen. Like a lot of things were starting to happen, and um, I ended up losing that job. So how long were you functional with it like, uh, Probably about how, before you started going into the um, you know, having physical problems? It wasn't long. It wasn't. It, really it was long. a real quick. It wasn't long from you know. It was probably about three months. But what about your thought processes? Oh man, it, it wasn't just you know. I could remember <laughs> partying on the weekend, Fridays partying on the weekend, went from partying on the weekend to every day I needed to get high. Mm. You know, just always being drawn. Yeah, it was like I didn't even want to do nothing unless mm -hmm. I was high. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, my aunt ended up kicking me out of that house because I, she's like, "You're not gonna live here. Like, we did you a favor. You're not, mm -hmm. gonna, you're not gonna live here." And I, and I, you know, I wasn't mad at her. I just was like, "Oh, well, I have money. You know, mm -hmm. I got money saved up, and I, I came back to San Diego." You were still pretty much like in charge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, so. like hey, it was fine. You mm -hmm. know, I was like, okay, well, that's cool. I understand. Mm -hmm. And you know, at this time, like you know, maybe a year had gone, a couple years had gone by, and then I just came back to San Diego, and um, that's where my addiction progressed. So when you first started using some of the um, some of the behavior, that's what I want to talk about. Um, the behaviors that you noticed about yourself how did your how did your behavior change because usually when um, someone's addicted the way that we notice i mean you can be functional for so long yeah. but then there's there's a there's a a, a threshold yeah. and, and and one thing that that we always share with individuals is that you start your your, your first high really is your last high mm. you, you're chasing it after that I like that. Okay. I like that. It's very true. Yeah, your first high is your is your last high. So I want you to talk about the your behaviors, uh, the the chase of of. Um, um, okay. I mean, you know, I know you said that you couldn't live without it every day, but what about your chase? What was I mean, um, just a typical day. Okay, the the typical day at, at that peak uh, would be like. Um, once the money was gone, once all that, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't care if I had to steal from my family. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't care who I had to hurt. Mm -hmm. um, I became a real good thief um, mm -hmm. at all costs. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get that money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, I 
can honestly say I can remember just going to my mom's purse, taking some money, hoping she didn't notice. As a matter of fact, I don't, I don't think I cared if she noticed. And, and, you, and when you she, know. if she ever accused you, you feel oh, like man, it, it was ugly. It was ugly. You were just like trying to turn it on, 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 on. You know, I, I, you I, remember, I remember, I yeah. remember one, I remember <laughs> one time. I was, I remember one time I was like, I just went up in the house and I took like the TV in a DVD player. And I remember, I don't give a F, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just boom. Yeah. You know, and I did that to my family, you know, numerous times, you know. And um Did you ever get into physical fights with them? Um or come close to it? No, no. They we you know, you know, what my sister we did, but for other reasons, you know, like like if she was drunk or whatever. But I pretty much my mom didn't play, she called the cops on me. Mm -hmm. You know? My mom would not hesitate to call the cops on So it was like you were terrorizing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. That's mm -hmm. when that's when I was at my at my worst with my mm -hmm. mom. And my mom closed her doors to me. Like it became like she didn't want me around, mm -hmm. you know? At all. At all. You know, mm -hmm. at this time I'm probably like, you know, I'm in my twenties. And um So that hurt her really bad. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and that's one thing that we, we really need to talk about is because when, when, when a person is the, the addict, they don't really realize how detrimental it is for the other person. It's kind of like, okay, you're the enemy. Like when Pastor Brown was on the drugs, I was the enemy. I was, and I almost started believing that I was wrong mm. for um, not being empathetic. Or not being feeling sympathy, and sometimes I would feel sympathy. So, uh, can you share with us any at any moment when your mother did feel sympathy for you, even after she um, banned you from coming to the house? Um, I would I would say my mom always like she always did have like she would she would speak with me like what are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. Don't you know we love you? Mm -hmm. Like my mom always did that, and she always did open up her doors. You know, once once it once it blew over, yes, it you know, it, it always I always ended up incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So the incarceration is where she would like we get in contact again, mm -hmm. and she let bygones be bygones, and mm -hmm. then so she would forgive. And yeah, everybody would pretty much yeah. Forgive. You know they, you know there's a point where my mom. If I called her from the jail or whatever, and my mom, she'll just cry. I, every time she cries, and she's like, mm. I'm like, why are you crying? And she's like, because I know you're safe. Mm. You know, I know you're going to be all right in there. Mm -hmm. She's like, always worried that I'm going to either kill myself. Or something, you know, the police is going to call her. Something, get something, a knock on the something, door. because yeah. what I was doing, and you know, I was robbing people. I was doing things. I was, you know, I was just being an evil person is a bad man. Yeah, and, and all for the drug of my choice, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so every time I did get her arrested, my mom, we, she opened up her door for me. Mm -hmm. and she, even with all the stuff that I just said, it's funny, like, my mom always still opened up her door. Just Gave like you she, another chance. Always. So how does that feel when you get that, when you, when you got those um, chances? I mean, you know, you, would you kind of think, to yourself before long, I'm gonna be doing it again. You know, look, my, I had a friend, I was on the run in, in, in Tijuana and I had a friend. What was you on the run for now, man? You telling me some good stuff now. I was on the run from <laughs> parole over here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was on the run from parole over here and I had a friend who, um, you know, you got a lot of deportees over there who, mm -hmm. who um, would love to be in the United States, and here I am running from the United States. God. You know, from just because I don't want to abide by probation mm -hmm. or parole. And so, you know, a lot of my friends over there would be like, they, they lose a little respect, be mad at me because, like, they're like, man, I wish I could go to the United States. Mm -hmm. And you're over here, like, what's wrong with you? So I had a friend who told me like this because, like, you know, my mom and my dad, they, they, could all, they open up their doors for me, and here mm -hmm. I am still abusing, still doing this. And so I had a friend who was like, he was like, hey man, like, everything's cool right now or whatever. He's like, but what are you going to do when your parents die? Mm -hmm. He's like, are you going to be able to adjust? Like, can you survive without your parents? Yeah. yeah. 
He was like, and that really hit me. Mm. That really, I can remember sitting there and I'm just like, man. So that was another reality that, that was, at a young age that that, that, that was, was like that was like what am I gonna do? Mm. You know, I had broken relationships with females like it, you know I had a I had a, a girlfriend you know, the mother of my child we were living with my parents like I didn't have no idea what you know your foundation was no there was no foundation and the foundation mm. that I did somehow have I was maybe like once every six seven months ruining it because i would go to mm. jail you know so it just just re- it was a cycle just a cycle it was a, it was a nap from mm. from like the age of 24 to the age of 35 mm. it was just ugliness mm. it was all ugly until i started you know so you couldn't take care of the the the, the, the child you, nah your mother I, and your father um who took up the slack no um, the mom. my son was born autistic mm-hmm. Um, so he uh, he needed special needs, you know. Do you attribute it to your substance abuse? I I believe so. Mm-hmm. I believe so. Mm-hmm. I really do believe so. I believe so because um, the mother of my child she was uh, she was using during pregnancy, mm-hmm. and this is kind of like a um, kind of like a you know not so easy subject with with her because um, we 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 talk, um, but we're just. You know, he's 13 now, and, mm-hmm. um, you know, I went, I was there for, like, the first couple years of his life, like, really hands-on, and even though me and her didn't, you know, we, there was nothing that we You couldn't, you didn't have yeah, nothing established in a relationship. No, nah, it was just drug use, mm-hmm. drug use, sex, all that, and no love, you know, mm-hmm. and a baby came out of it. Mm-hmm. So, um. What's his name? His name is Daniel Isaac. Daniel Isaac. Yeah, I named two biblical names. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, you know, him being autistic, we didn't know he was, I didn't know he was autistic till, um, I was in prison. Mm. You know, my, his niece, I mean, his cousin and were, they were born around the same time and they were already, uh, excelling in speech wise, mm. talking and all he would do was grunt. So they took him to a specialist. And, and what I, age was that when you discovered about, about Um, they, he was, a. Uh, Two and a half, three years old. Mm-hmm. I was already in prison. Mm-hmm. I would say about he was about almost four mm-hmm. when they really found out because um, my niece uh, was already talking, you know, mm-hmm. they were drawing, and mm-hmm. they started noticing something with him. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and you know, he's born looking normal, everything, mm-hmm. but he does have a slight case of Asper, Asperger's Asperger's syndrome. Asperger's and yeah. sounds and different. Yeah. Like so that. so um. It became a thing, like when I did get out of prison, it became like, um, I was with some other girl and her dad was like, well, you wanna get a lawyer, um, I could help you get, you know, you could get your rights to to your son, you know, mm-hmm. visits, whatever, partial custody. And I was just like, the life I was living, like him being autistic, I couldn't take him from his schooling, none of that stuff. So yeah, because it's a total different. Yeah, I, I don't think I. Yeah. Like if he was normal, like mm-hmm. if he was just like normal, and he didn't have to go to like special school, it it, it was a fine line, mm-hmm. you know. And I didn't want to. I was full in addiction still. Yeah, you couldn't handle that responsibility. I couldn't, I couldn't do it to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. in my head, yeah. So in my head, it was like the best thing was to just stay away till mm-hmm. I figured things out and. I still was in addiction for quite some time, mm-hmm. you know? And then it became a thing. I could remember being, um, when I was getting high, I could remember just like feeling so much guilt, so much shame, 